Since Nigeria slid into recession late last year, the government has been clamoring for the Made in Nigeria products. In other words, buy Niger in order to grow the Naira. That's already resounding. And the first to take the plunge is the first ever smartphone assembling plant established in Lagos, Nigeria's commercial hub. But will it penetrate the already saturated market? Our focus on Business Nigeria today. Welcome. I am Yemisi Landredo. It's been 15 years since Nigeria joined the rest of the world's mobile phone community. And there seems to be a laudable achievement as the country now has its first phone manufacturing plant. A company called AfriOne has launched the first made in Nigeria smartphones, hoping to produce 300,000 phones every month with each phone using locally sourced or made parts. This plant is geared towards the first indigenously produced smartphones and other consumer devices for sale in the Nigerian marketplace, an unprecedented move by that company. A business crew visited the facility and the chief operating officer, Sandeep Natu, took them on a tour of the factory, explaining functions of each machinery as well as emphasizing the unique features of the first made in Nigeria smartphone. Well, Sandeep. Uh, joins me now on the program. Many thanks for your time, Sandeep. It's glad to have you here. Thank you. Yes, the first mobile phone factory in Nigeria. Let's start with this. Are these smartphones fully made in Nigeria? I mean, do we have the components to, uh, to assemble the devices? Mm, actually, uh, today in the uh, electronic industry, it's not possible to manufacture everything because each product has its own uh, complexities and you know technical know-how. So, uh, for instance, the processor, Snapdragon, they've been doing it for some time, the touch screen, the motherboard, the memory, everybody has its own specialist manufacturer. So, uh, most of the uh, industry players, they are only assembling, getting the best part from each product uh, vendor, putting that together, getting a design which is, you know, more suitable to what the product you want to bring out. But I must tell you that if we have to say it's a made in Nigeria product, then we have to have all this on ground. But what, what is the company looking at? Is there a plan for us to have these assembly plants in Nigeria? The assembly plant is already there and that is the first step. Okay. So gradually more and more components will be made with the local effort. For instance, we made sure that the packaging is done in Nigeria. Nigeria. When we started, most of the people told us that it cannot be done, but today the packaging is fully done in Nigeria. Similarly, uh, as we grow ahead, there are things like you know battery, back panel, buttons, and various components which can slowly, slowly be localized and then all put together. How much has been invested into this? Quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just you cannot reveal that to us? Uh, you it's must at it's, least it's put, not, put a peg uh, in it. I think it's not important right now, but uh, it's in excess of uh, maybe uh, $2 million. $2 million. You said it's not important, but I would say it is important because looking at the Forex uh, challenge Nigeria is going through at the moment, and of course, there was no, the CBN is intervening. But aside from how, um, the, the amount that you've invested, like you said, how do you get your funding? Um, uh, let's say that uh, the federal government and the Lagos government have been supporting us in this venture and it is not without uh, government support that you can, you know, run this venture. So okay. it is with their support that we are here and hopefully things will turn out better. Okay, let me take your word here. You said one of your mission is not only to sell products uh, but to contribute positively to the growth of the economy. And of course, that's the essence of yes. made in Nigeria products by yes. empowering the youth Yes. With a set skill, yes. how easy is it for you to actually empower the youth in Nigeria? Uh, in two, three ways. When we put up a plant in uh, Lagos, there is a certain amount of employment that we generate. The employment is both direct and indirect. Directly, we could be benefiting up to, say, 500 people who are employed directly with us, either working in the factory or selling the product outside as the part of sales teams or promoters. Okay. Indirectly, there are distributor channels, there are, you know, packaging that we source, there is the logistics, and so indirectly, many more benefit. Apart from that, we are also, with the help of Lagos government, 
partnering with Laspotec. Okay. We have done a MOU with Laspotec and uh, we have plans to make a mobile skills lab in Laspotec, which teaches the students who are there uh, the basics of mobile repairing and assembly techniques. So it helps us in two ways. Uh, one is that uh, the students learn the skill that we would need. They may not necessarily be employed by, the, by us because you know there is only a certain amount that uh, we can employ. employ. But those skills are universal. So they will benefit either ways. Okay, so at the moment in your own employee, how many could you uh, tell us are employed by your company? In the first phase, we would probably employ around 125 employees local. Okay, yes. those with the skills or those you actually put through? Uh, we will have to train them in the first phase, uh, but uh, that's not a big deal. Well, let's look at your board. Do we have Nigerian representation? Because yes. I know this is promoted by Indians. It is promoted by Indians, but the group has been here for over uh, 30 to 40 years, and we have uh, Nigerians on the board. Okay, yes, like? Local. Our chairman, board? Our okay. chairman holds a Nigerian passport and uh, there are other directors who are Nigerians as well. All right, now you said this is a technological breakthrough for the, for, for the enterprising Nigerian populace and your aim is to democratize technology, of course, by offering affordable innovations, removing barriers for, you know, for, for already what we have, advanced technologies. Mm -hmm. Now, how prepared are you? The market is already saturated. Mm -hmm. How prepared are you to penetrate into the market with these smartphones? Okay, uh, there, is, there are, uh, you know, the strategy is to bring value to customer. As long as you bring value to the customer, I am sure they will patronize. And the fact that it is made in Nigeria uh, is, uh, you know, uh, advantageous to us in the sense that uh, all the components and all the spare parts are already available with us. So I don't have to start, uh, you know, the, the service is an issue in mobile industry today. Okay. And luckily, you've been here for 40 to 30 to 40 years. Yes. Okay, so, so has the environment been friendly? Yes, very. That's why we are here. Okay, tell you us know. more. How friendly? Very friendly. You don't exist in Nigeria for 40 years without the environment <laughs> being friendly. <laughs> okay. yeah. All right, then. Another mm. thing or you talk about is your CSR. Yes. And, of course, entrepreneurs, small businesses drive the economy, yes. any economy of any country. Yes. And I know you have training programs that encourage entrepreneurship. Tell us more about this. Well, like we said, that we intend to, you know, start localizing more and more components because the more components we source from within Nigeria, the easier it becomes for us. So we are looking to actively participate with the government in helping other people who can, you know, then be budding entrepreneurs in terms of either, you know, making things like back panels, buttons, uh, flip cases, battery, you know, the list is endless. And uh, we would actually support anyone if he wants to come and partner with us in any such, uh, you know, move. Move. All right, we'd have to take a break now, Sandeep. We'll come back and talk more about this. Thank of course, you. I'm sure you have challenges that you are currently facing working in Nigeria. So you would want to share that with us and, of course, how you plan uh, to actually uh, go against these challenges. All right. All right, that would be after this break. Just stay with us. You're watching Business Nigeria. We've been speaking about the first ever smartphone assembly plant established in Lagos, Nigeria's commercial hub. And I've been speaking with the Chief Operating Officer, uh, Afriwan Sandeep Natu. Yes, Sandeep, thank you for... Thank for, you. Exactly. Now, of course, there is no company that wouldn't have its challenges yes. that it's facing. I'm sure you mm. want to share one or two of these challenges with us. And, of course, your plans on how to overcome these challenges. Okay. Uh, one of the basic challenges that uh, we faced is, of course, uh, we discussed this, the skilled manpower, okay. Having, since, you know, there is a paucity of uh, electronic assembly plants in Nigeria, the manpower is not readily available. And therefore, uh, there is an element of training which is involved before you can, you know, practically use them in the plant. But uh, like we said, we are already identifying people who are, you know, 
who can be trained. We have partnered with Lasfotech. We are creating a lab so that the skills uh, can be imparted to the students when they are learning. So, uh, I, apart from that, I think most of the challenges are generic which any manufacturing industry faces. faces. All yes. right, Let, let's take that partnership with Lagos State Polytechnic uh, further. Yes. Is there a, a plan to actually set up a, a kind of technical school or what, what is the plan really? Let's talk, let's, di let's dig deep into that. Okay. Uh, as of now, we want to start with a lab and uh, we will be providing them with all the equipments which help the student in learning something like uh, on the job training. So we will create a mini assembly line in that lab so that the students who come to learn there can actually learn to work on an assembly line. We will also provide them equipment which do the basic testing and diagnosing of fault analysis of the mobiles, the basic equipment which helps them repair mobile and mobile devices. Taking it further, we will probably also start partnering with uh, uh, Lego State or Laspotech in providing the content educational content, but uh, that is still in phase two, phase three. All right. Yeah. I want to know if you have made any any sort of money so far on the smartphones and <laughs> what's your projection? So far, uh, we've just established. So, of course, uh, I don't think we would have made any money because the sale is just started. But uh, we are very confident of uh, doing well and uh, hopefully all okay, will Okay, so how do you plan to plow back into the economy with these funds? Okay, um, we said, like I said, uh, we are already partnering with Lego State and Lego State uh, has already offered us, uh, you know, help in terms of tax breaks and land. So we are already planning our uh, second assembly plant because the capacity which I have may not suffice for my products in the longer duration. Okay. Therefore, we are looking at a second uh, assembly plant with an R&D center. Okay. So that is the growth uh, that we are looking at and that second plant uh, and the R&D center will help us localize as much of the you know, device as we can. As we can. Not only uh, when I say mobile product, it is not just a smartphone. We have also come out with a 10.1 inch tab come laptop. It's a two in one product in which we are partnering with the federal N power program. So we are giving that, uh, we are one of the vendors in the N power program. Okay. And very soon, apart from the smartphones, tab, uh, we will get into laptops, smartwatches. So there is a proper, you know, growth strategy which is available. All right, Chief Operating Officer Sandeep Natu. Uh, Chief Operating Officer, everyone, thanks for your time on Business Nigeria. Thank you so much.